evening. It's certainly uh, an honor to be uh, called a poet on uh, Robbie Burton's night. I don't think I can uh, quite keep up with him. But uh, I'm looking through the life of Robbie Burton before I uh, you know, read him out here. And, uh, probably you not know, make comparisons like I find to be his life and mine. He said he read very much as a youth, but he only had a limited supply of reading material. So did I. All I have is Ethan's catalog open there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, with, uh, said that he, uh, as you can see, grew up to be tall, dark, and handsome. I figured two out of three wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> for quite a while, I, uh, if the right pronunciation is the Robbie Burns. I thought it was Bobby Burns. Then I found out he was a policeman in London. And uh, he was a little bit luckier than I was. When he proposed to Jean Amore, her father refused. <coughs> Mind if I had to <laughs> And uh, as he looked over his work in the just where he married her, he uh, said at the time he had pwned for a million tucked away in his desk. So if anybody's looking for an investment, I've got lots of phones tucked away in my desk, too. <laughs> and uh, as Bobby Burns was lucky, later on he became a civil servant and a farmer and a poet. Well, so did I, but not necessarily in that order. <laughs> <laughs> he eventually ended up with a farm on the River Knife, about 12 miles from Dumfries. I ended up on a farm on the River St. John, about 12 kilometers from Fair Landover. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there are some similarities there. The main thing is that his uh, fame increased greatly after his death. I hope I don't have to wait quite that long. <laughs> and, uh, he died at the ripe old age of 37. I hope I'm not here in that. But anyway, those are a few of the sort of comparisons there that are trying to get me uh, going there. Now, I'm not going to read uh, any long poems because uh, I couldn't keep up with the uh, words in that regard. Just a couple of short ones. Uh, you know, remember when the drug bust was here two or three months ago? Well, a lot of people said, what would happen, you know, if that had happened around here? So this is a little story called The Drug Bust. <laughs> the boys were from Columbia, and they had a load of dope. Their plane was getting pretty hot. They were nearly out of rope. They have to set her down someplace, so they were also low in fuel. If you get caught, you're on the spot. That was their golden rule. Well, they finally found a pasture, quite smooth, and set it down and started out to check with local folks to see if a pilot could be found. Because if they found a pilot, why well, he surely had a plane. And with some firm persuasion, they soon be in the air again. Their English wasn't very good, but luck seemed on their side. They found the pilot just inside. Why, well, yes, he knew the land about, like every pilot should. <coughs> Why, well, no, he didn't have a license, but he could do the job real good. While he gathered his equipment, the wife made a quiet call to town to notify the yellow legs and help bring the dragnet down. After the boys were placed in handcuffs, as compliments were being passed, all praised him for the chance he took when a pilot was for asked. If they had found your lying, by well, your life you might have sold. I know, he said, I didn't lie, the truth I've always told. You see, I am a pilot, and I must surely thank the Lord. His works are done in many ways, for I pilot by the court. <laughs> Sage thumbed his braces, rubbed his chin, and cannoned his hat, 
If you'd only ask me the question, I could give you an answer to that. I may not resemble a scientist, but my observations are proved to be true. One project, as big as the hill is, if that's big, it's going to take two. <laughs> Thirst of an adventurer tried and true. 